Okay, so everyone's talking about solar and wind power these days, right? Like, they're the stars of the clean energy show. Yeah, they get a lot of attention. But uh, what about the clean energy source that's been quietly powering our lives for, like, over a century? You mean hydropower? Exactly. Hydropower. It's easy to forget about, but it's still a really big deal. And that's what we're doing this deep dive today. We're looking at this, uh, this National Hydropower Association white paper called hydropower at risk yeah hydropower at risk that title really makes you stop and think doesn't it it does it makes you realize that maybe we're not paying enough attention to something that's actually super important so before we get into all the reasons why hydropower might be at risk let's talk about just how big of a deal it actually is yeah. i mean first of all it's been around since the 1880s the 1880s and it still provides get this 6.2 percent of all the energy used in the u.s that's a lot of energy and a huge percentage of all the renewable energy we generate here in the U.S. It's actually 28.7%, which is enough to power 25 million homes. 25 million. That's mind-blowing. Okay, so we're talking about powering a huge chunk of the country. But here's something I always wondered. When people talk about hydropower, they always picture those, you know, those massive dams, right? Right. Like those are the iconic images. But it's not just about those giant dams, is it? There's also this whole other side of hydropower called pumped storage hydropower, or PSH. Yeah, pumped storage is a big part of the hydropower picture. It sounds kind of amazing. Like, we're talking about 96% of all utility-scale energy storage. Mm. 96%. That's what I read. It's a pretty incredible technology. It's like having a giant battery for the entire electrical grid. Okay, so explain it to me like I'm five. Yeah. How does this giant water battery actually work? Okay, so imagine you have two reservoirs, one at a higher elevation than the other, and they're connected by a tunnel. Okay, I'm picturing it. So when there's extra energy in the grid, maybe when the sun is shining really bright or the wind is really blowing. And we have all that extra solar and wind power. Exactly. So you use that extra energy to pump water uphill to the higher reservoir. So you're basically storing that energy. You got it. You're charging up the battery. And then when energy demand increases, like during peak hours or when the sun goes down. You release the water. Exactly. The water flows downhill through the tunnel, turning turbines as it goes, which generates electricity. So it's like releasing the stored energy from the battery. Exactly. Pumped storage is all about smoothing out the bumps in energy supply and demand. And it can provide continuous power for 8 to 12 hours. Wow. 8 to 12 hours. That's way longer than my phone battery lasts. It's a game changer for grid scale energy storage. OK, so we've got this giant water battery, right, helping to keep our lights on. But this white paper is called hydropower at risk. So there's got to be more to the story, right? Right. Pump storage is really important, but it's just one part of the hydropower picture. And yeah. the whole picture is what's at risk. Yeah. And I'll admit, I didn't really realize how important hydropower was until we started doing this deep dive. It's like it's the unsung hero of the energy grid, keeping everything running smoothly behind the scenes. That's a great way to put it. And a lot of what makes hydropower so valuable is something called a uh, Grid services. Grid services. Yeah. You might have heard terms like reliability and resilience. Oh, yeah. Those words get thrown around a lot these days. Yeah. But we rely on electricity for basically everything now. Smartphones, laptops. I mean, can you imagine life without lights? Blackouts are a huge deal. Absolutely. And that's why it's so important to understand those terms, reliability and resilience. Reliability basically means that the grid delivers power when we need it consistently, day in and day out. Okay, like my coffee maker. I can rely on it every morning to make coffee. Yeah. That's reliable. Exactly. Resilience is a little different. It's the grid's ability to bounce back quickly from problems. So, you know, even the most reliable coffee maker might have an off day, right? Right. But a resilient coffee maker would be easy to fix and get you your coffee quickly. So reliable means the lights stay on. Resilient means the grid can handle a curveball. Where does hydropower fit into all of this? Hydropower is great for both, but it's really resilience where it shines. And that's because hydropower plants can do some pretty unique things. Things like inertia, voltage control, and black start. Those sound like technical terms. They are a bit technical, but they're crucial for a stable and resilient grid. Okay, so break it down for us. What do those terms actually mean, and how do they relate to hydropower? Sure. So remember we talked about those spinning turbines and pumped storage? Well, 
all hydropower plants have turbines. And that spinning actually provides inertia to the grid. Inertia, like physical momentum. Exactly. Think of it like a bicycle. It's a lot harder to knock over a bicycle when the wheels are spinning. Right, because yeah. it has all that momentum. Same with the grid. That spinning inertia acts like a shock absorber. So if there's a sudden drop in power supply from somewhere else, like a power plant suddenly going offline, the inertia from hydropower helps prevent a domino effect that could lead to a blackout. So hydropower is like the steady hand on the steering wheel, keeping everything balanced. Yeah, it's a great analogy. And then there's voltage control. That's basically like keeping your foot on the gas pedal at just the right pressure. Hydropower plants can adjust their output really quickly to maintain the correct voltage on the grid, which is essential for delivering electricity safely and efficiently. And then there's black start capability. Black start. That sounds ominous. Like restarting after a system crash. That's actually a good way to think about it. Black start is the ability of a power plant to restart itself after a blackout without needing any external power. Wait, so they can reboot the whole system? Like hitting a giant reset button? Uh, pretty much. They can get themselves up and running without relying on the grid. Most power plants need an external power source to even start. But hydropower plants can be the initial spark that brings the whole system back online. Wow. So hydropower is like the emergency generator, the first responder and the steady hand keeping the grid going all at the same time. Okay, so we've talked a lot about how important hydropower is, especially with all those grid services that most people don't even know about. Yeah, it's definitely the unsung hero of the energy grid. Totally, but then we come to this white paper, Hydropower at Risk, and it kind of feels like this essential piece of the puzzle might be in trouble. Yeah, that's a big takeaway from this report. Hydropower is facing some real challenges that could have a big impact on its future. Like that statistic about all those hydropower licenses that are about to expire, that was kind of alarming. 451 licenses between 2020 and 2035. That's 15,700 megawatts of potential power generation gone. And the paper said that's almost 40% of the non-federal hydropower fleet. What does non-federal even mean? Good question. Basically, it means those hydropower plants aren't run by the federal government. They might be owned by states or cities or even private companies. And because they're not federally owned, they've got a different set of rules and hurdles to deal with. Like the licensing process is a big one. And this report does not make that process sound fun. Mm. Seven to yeah. 10 years, mm. millions of dollars, yeah. stakeholders battling it out. You can't blame anyone for just wanting to give up. It's a really complicated and expensive process for sure. And you're right, the report actually mentions that there's been a trend of license surrenders. License surrenders. Yeah. So they're not even trying to renew, they're just giving up. Yeah, some operators are choosing to just walk away from their licenses rather than go through the whole renewal process. It's just too much. I mean, it makes sense in a way. They're providing this vital service, keeping the lights on, and it feels like we're making it as difficult and expensive as possible for them to do that. And then on top of all that, there's the issue of financial incentives or the lack thereof. Oh, yeah. The report mentioned that. That hydropower often gets the short end of the stick when it comes to incentives. Exactly. They often have a hard time getting the same tax breaks and financial support that other renewables like wind and solar get. Which seems a little unfair, right? Hydropower is doing all this heavy lifting, providing that reliability and resilience we talked about. It's like we're saying, hey, hydropower, we need you but we're gonna make it really, really hard for you to keep doing what you're doing. It does seem that way sometimes. And it really makes you wonder, as we're moving toward a cleaner energy future, are we really giving hydropower the attention and support it needs and deserves? It's a really good question. And this deep dive has definitely made me think differently about hydropower. It's clearly more important than a lot of people realize, but it's also facing some serious challenges, challenges that could have big consequences for all of us. So. Where do we go from here? Well, I think awareness is a great place to start. The more people understand about where their energy comes from, about how it all works, the better. So it's not just about flipping a switch and expecting the lights to turn on. We need to understand what it actually takes to keep those lights on, right? Exactly. And who's involved and what challenges they're facing. Because ultimately, those challenges affect all of us. That's a great point. Well, that's about all the time we have for today. But hopefully this deep dive has given you a lot to think about. Like next time you hear about hydropower, think about what we talked about today. Think about the crucial role it plays in our energy system and ask yourself, are we doing enough to support this essential part of a clean energy future? It's definitely something we're thinking about. It sure is. Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs>